Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the retina and its different layers. We are discussing our special senses under which the vision is being discussed and today we are going to discuss about the retina and its different layers and photochemistry of vision will be separately discussed in the next video. So coming to the retina. The retina is rightly called as the brain's window of the world. So basically whatever information we are getting from the world surrounding environment that is being converted to the photoreceptors and they are finally transmitted to the brain to make meaning out of the surrounding environment. So that's why it is called as the brain's window of the world. Then it is the small displaced part of the central nervous system itself as if the central nervous system has been displaced to the periphery. Then whenever a light falls from the outside to the, that of the retina, it has to pass through the many layers of the retina. Then finally, it will reach the photoreceptor layer and from there it will be transmitted again back into the different layers and finally carried through the optic nerve and finally they will reach the central nervous system. Why this kind of arrangement is there rather than the photoreceptor in the front and the rest behind? Because the photoreceptor needs a very much of a supporting layer which is called as the pigment epithelium. And once we understand the functions of the pigment epithelium, then we will come to know why this kind of arrangement is present. Next thing is there are two important regions in the retina which is called as the fovea, another one is the optic disc. And as you can see from the diagram, this region that is the central region, the region over here it is called as the fovea. And fovea has a special arrangement wherein we can see that the rest of the layers have many layers before the light hits the photoreceptors. Whereas in the foveal region, they are displaced to the side. It's as if they are leaving way for the fovea photoreceptors to be directly hit by the light. And that is the reason why the central vision is maximum in the foveal region. And the foveal region will have the maximum visual acuity. Why it is having the maximum, maximum visual acuity? Because it is not being distorted by the different other layers. So it has the maximum visual acuity and it is the one which is providing the central vision. So both of it is done with the help of the foveal region and there is another region wherein the collection of all the optic nerve fibers reach there and exit the retina. This region is called as the optic disc. Since there are no rods and cones available in this region, they are responsible for the physiological blind spot in all the person. So this is the optic disc and finally it is carried through the optic nerve and finally they will reach the central nervous system. So now one thing we have understood is the photoreceptor layer is not the first layer. It is almost present inside the last layer. That is the last layer is the pigment epithelium. Last but one is the photoreceptor layer. Now what we are going to do is we are going to club them into different group of layers and study them what is what are all the things present in that particular layer. The layer one which is the outermost layer that is from the internal surface of the eye when you look at it is in the outermost region that is the pigment epithelium. And here the pigment epithelium layer is like the protective gear for the photoreceptor layer. They are enclosing this photoreceptor layer as you can see here. What is the purpose of this is because whenever light is falling on it, it prevents the scattering from one photoreceptor to the next one. Next thing is whenever the light is falling, it is not like all the photons are being absorbed. Some of them are not absorbed and that can be reabsorbed by the pigment epithelium. This will reabsorb the excess light and it prevents the internal scattering. If this excess light is available, what will happen? There will be internal scattering inside the eye and nothing will be perceived and we will be just be able to perceive the glare only. Next thing is it is constantly providing nutrients that is like the vitamins like vitamin A. Not only that, whenever any rods or cones go for a phagocytosis, that phagocyto material is taken up by this the pigment epithelium. So this pigment epithelium is like the protective gear for the entire photoreceptor layer. And the second layer which is the most important layer is the photoreceptor layer. And what is the composition of this photoreceptor layer? All of us know that it is the rods and cones. Rods and cones. The photoreceptor layer consists of both rods and cones. And we will have a detailed discussion about the structure of rods and cones while we discuss about the photochemistry of the vision. Next we will move to the next layers. And next we will study two layers together which is the layer 3 and 10. Why I have grouped 3 and 10? Because both of the layers are formed by the same structure. As you can see here, there is a huge cell which is running from the 10th layer till the 3rd layer. As I am shading here, you can see that this is the entire cell. And this cell is nothing but the Muller cell. What is this Muller cell? Is? This Muller cell is like the glial cell in the CNS. It is the supporting glial cell for this photoreceptor layers. 
and this Muller cell extends from the layer 3 to the layer 10 and during their extension they form a thin membrane like it is a separating membrane which is formed at layer 3 and layer 10 and that is why this layer 3 is called as the outer limiting membrane and layer 10 is called as the inner limiting membrane. Both of them are formed by the Muller cell layer. So, layer 3 and layer 10 we are going to remember together. Next coming to the three group of layers which is the layer 4, layer 5 and layer 6. And next group will be discussing the layer 6, 7 and 8. Why this grouping has been done is because the nuclei as well as the plexiforms are formed in different groups. So, basically we will try to understand the, the different cells which are present and then we will understand these layers. So, what are the cells which are present? Here we know that the layer of rods and cones is present. Then the nuclei of rods and cones will be present in the next layer, the layer of rod and cone and the nuclei of rod and cone will be present. And there is one more group of cell which is present in one layer which is the bipolar cell. This bipolar cell is like the neuron which is transmitting from the photoreceptor to the ganglion cell layer. Then amacrine cell, these are supporting cell and horizontal cell. These cells we will discuss individually when we study about the different properties of vision. Then beyond that there is one more cell layer which is called as the ganglion cell. So basically we have three groups of cells. One cell is the photoreceptor layer cell which is having the nucleus in particular layer and the next group is bipolar cell, amacrine cell, horizontal cell and the innermost one is the ganglion cell layer. So how do they form the groups? So coming to the group 4, 5 and 6. In group 4, the outer fourth layer is called as outer nuclear layer. Why it is called outer nuclear layer? Because it is present on the outer side. And what does the nucleus it contain? It contains the nucleus of the rods and cones. Then sixth layer is inner nuclear layer. Inner nuclear layer, what do we have? We have the bipolar cells and the horizontal cells and the amacrine cells. Between these two cells, there has to be some connections. Whenever the neuronal connections are formed, they are called as plexiforms. So, we have something called as the outer plexiform layer in between the outer nuclear and the inner nuclear layer. Now, you will be able to understand what will be there in the inner nuclear and the ganglion cell layer. So, coming to the next set of layers which is the layer 6, 7, 8. Here we can see that the sixth layer we have already discussed, it is the inner nuclear layer. What does it have? It has the bipolar cells and the amacrine and the horizontal cells. And in the layer 8, we have the ganglion cell layer. So, in between these two cell layers, there will be again plexiforms. So, that is called as the inner plexiform layer because now we are moving towards the inner part of the eye. So, that is called as the inner plexiform layer. What is the, this ganglion cell? This ganglion cell is very, very important because this is the one which is going to form the axons and finally, they are going to form the next layer. So, what is the next layer? The next layer is the layer number 9 which is the nerve fiber layer and this axons which are formed from the ganglion cells are going to form the layer number 9 and they pass via the optic nerve, then chiasma, then tract and finally reach the central nervous system which we will study in the optic nerve pathway. And one more beautiful thing about this the nerve fiber layer is, this nerve fiber layer is unmyelinated inside the eye. Why do, why do we don't want myelination? Because myelination can inhibit the entry of light because our light is entering from here and reaching the photoreceptor. So, we want minimal distortion to ha happen. So, the the ones, the layer that is the optic nerve fiber layer which is present inside the eye that is not having myelination, they are unmyelinated. Once they exit the eyeball, they will be myelinated for the protection. So, now let us try to recap all the layers. We have seen several layers. Now, let us try to recap them. So, the innermost layer which is supporting entirely the photoreceptor layer that is the pigment epithelium. So, layer number 1 is pigment epithelium and layer number 2 is photoreceptor layer and we have group 3 and 10. So, what is 3 and 10? Both of them are formed by the Muller cell. So, we have to find our Muller cell. The layer number is 3 and 10. And we have two groups of three sets. One is the outer nuclear layer, outer plexiform layer and the inner <coughs> nuclear layer. So, between the outer nuclear and the inner nuclear, we have the, we have the plexiform layer. So, the inner nuclear layer, outer plexiform layer, outer nuclear. Outer nuclear and inner nuclear. Outer nuclei, what do we have? We have the rods and cones nuclei and inner nuclei, what do we have? We have the bipolar cells. Between them, we have the plexus that is forming the outer plexiform layer. Then again, group number 6, 7, 8, what does they have? They have the inner nuclear layer and one more nuclear layer, it is nothing but the ganglion cell layer. The ganglionic nuclei is present there and between them, we have the plexus again. So, we have the inner nuclear layer and the ganglion cell layer. Between them, we have the inner plexiform layer. From the ganglion cell, the nerve fibers are formed. That is why the layer 9 is called as a nerve fiber layer. So, try to remember them in, the, in this order. 1, 2, then 3 and 10, 
फोर फाइव सिक्स सिक्स सेवन एट दैट सेट देन नाइन्थ लेयर इज नथिंग बट द गैंगलियन से लेयर कंटिन्यूशन आई होप इट्स क्लियर थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग द वीडियो इफ यू लाइक द कंटेंट शेयर टू यर फ्रेंड्स एंड सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल थैंक यू सो मच